John Calvin, on Psalm 55. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, and hear me. I mourn in my complaint, and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst of in the midst thereof, deceit and guile depart not from her streets. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it, neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon him and let them go down quick to hell for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days but I will trust in thee. Truly it was not an enemy that cast disgrace upon me, for then I could have borne it. But it was you, a man of my own order, and my close friend. We sweetly exchanged our most secret thoughts. We walked into the house of God in company. We are taught by the experience of David, as here represented to us, that we must expect in this world to meet with the secret treachery of friends, as well as with sword and open war. But he has also raised up domestic enemies to injure it with the more secret weapons of stratagem and fraud. This is a species of foe which we can neither flee from nor put to flight. David was betrayed by one who had been his intimate associate and to whom he had looked up as a leader. It matters not only secular, in matters not only secular, excuse me, but religious. We are taught by the Spirit to reverence all the natural ties which bind us together in society. Besides the common and universal tie of humanity, there are others of a more sacred kind, but which we should feel ourselves attached to men in proportion as they are more nearly connected with us than others by neighborhood, relationship, or professional calling, the more as we know that such connections are not the result of chance, but of providential design and arrangement. The bond of religious fellowship is the most sacred of all. I will call upon God, and Jehovah will save me. From the particular mention he makes of evening, morning, and noon, we are left to infer that these must have been the stated hours of prayer amongst the godly at that period. Sacrifices were offered daily in the temple, morning and even, evening, and by this they were taught to engage privately in prayer within their own houses. At noon also it was the practice to offer additional sacrifices. As we are naturally indisposed for the duty of prayer, there is a danger that we may become remiss and gradually omit it altogether unless we restrict ourselves to a certain rule. In appointing particular fixed hours to be observed for his worship, there can be no doubt that God has respect to the infirmity of our nature, and the same principle should be applied to the secret as to the public services of devotion, as appears from the passage now before us, and from the example of Daniel in Daniel 9, verse 3.